YouTube, what's going on? It's the Fantasy Professor back at it again with a brand new video. It's November uh, 15th, and just to recap from last night, uh, if you use my lineup uh, that I put under the description in my previous video, I got 270 fantasy points, which is kind of decent, but you know I was expecting a lot more from Steven Adams, Alfred Payton, and some of those other guys that underperformed. But overall, uh, if you used it in cash, you probably uh, won some money. Regardless, in tournaments, you could have cashed as well. Um, on the low end, probably like that $6 range. But um, first off, you can see I'm wearing my fresh DK apparel. I got the hat as well. Um, I got this off of eBay, same thing. Um, it was like, what was it, like $15 for this long sleeve t-shirt. Pretty dope. I like it. Uh, along with the hat, it's, uh, DK makes the best apparel. And there's nothing better than that. But to recap from last night, uh, let's get started. My lineup, 270 fantasy points. These are the guys that I recommended down below. Uh, Russell Westbrook, 61.75 fantasy points. Now, they got blown out by the Detroit Pistons, but regardless, he still put up that monster uh, fantasy stat line. James Harden, 58.75. On the flip side, they blew out the 76ers, but uh, he still, I don't know why he was in. Uh, I was watching the highlights, and he was in like through the fourth quarter, even though they were blowing them out by 30-plus points for most of the game. Aaron Baines, 31 fantasy points, like I said. I mentioned him over and over and over again. Andre Drummond was out. Uh, I've seen Aaron Baines before produce uh, when he gets that starting role, uh, especially when he was in San Antonio. Uh, he dropped 31 fantasy points, as you can see. So he uh, exceeded value by like 11x or so. Uh, very, very good value play. If you played him last night, you probably won uh, some tournaments. Uh, my letdown of the night was Justin Hamilton because I paired them both in one of my lineups. Uh, obviously, he didn't produce. He was the contrarian play because Brooke Lopez was out. Uh, Tobias Harris, 41 fantasy points. If you played him, uh, he was also in one of the winning lineups. Uh, very, very uh, good value here. Terrence Jones, uh, if you watched my previous video, he was the only guy I liked out of the Pelicans. And as you can see, he dropped 36.5 fantasy points. So if you used him, good job to you. Uh, he was at that, uh, what was it? He was at around that 4K price range or less at 36.5 fantasy points. He easily exceeded value last night. Trevor Ariza, 42 fantasy points. I did not see this coming. I put him in because uh, I thought he was going to do well against the Sixers. And Robert Covington and what do you know, he dropped a 42 fantasy point game. Trey Lyles, 31.25 fantasy points. He was uh, amazing against the Memphis Grizzlies at home, uh, but Derek Favors not playing uh, as much minutes. Porzingis, 42.25 fantasy points. They blew out the Dallas Mavericks without Dirk. If Dirk was in, I don't feel like his stat line would have been that high. Chris Paul, he still had 51 fantasy points, even though it was a blowout of the Brooklyn Nets. It was over by halftime. It was like 47 to 71 at halftime. But I guess they still left him in to get those stats and the double doubles and the assists and whatnot. Uh, last guy that I recommended that I went that did good, Jeff T. 36.5 fantasy points. Uh, they did very very well against the Orlando Magic last night. Uh, Orlando was coming off a of back to back, so I didn't feel like Alfred Payton was going to do his best. So that's why I recommended Jeff T. All right. Let's get into tonight's slate. Uh, it's November 15th. we got a five-game slate uh, for tonight. Uh, first game, it's an Eastern Conference Finals rematch between the Toronto Raptors and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, on Toronto's side, I like DeMar DeRozan, 8,800. He's doing things that uh, Michael Jordan never even did, putting up these consistent 30-plus point fantasy, uh, no, 30 actual point games. Uh, he's had, I think, in like nine games now, nine straight or something like that. Uh, as you can see, his price is very, very up there. He's an elite option. He's a lot for to be an all-star this year, and I really, really like him in this spot. I saw what he did last year in the playoffs against Cleveland. Uh, J.R. Smith is not much of a defender. Uh, they might throw LeBron on him because they need some kind of defense, especially with their leading scorer, and he leads the league in scoring. He might win the scoring title this year. You never know. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Kyle Lowry is another guy I like to target. Kyrie Irving does not play the best defense. Uh, at 7,600, he's a great price, and I saw him produce in the final in the Eastern Conference Finals against Cleveland. So I like him a lot, even though he's on the road. He's a good look. Uh, Lucas Noguera, baby, as they like to call him, 4,100. If this turns into a blowout, which I think it will, I feel like Cleveland's gonna uh, streamroll uh, the Toronto Raptors tonight.
But if it stays close, I wouldn't recommend him. But I feel like there's a blowout uh, with that over-under, that 208. I don't feel like uh, that it's going to live up to that hype. And I feel like Nogueira is going to get more minutes and they're going to bench Valanciunas. With that being said, 4100 is a great price for him. Uh, he's been working and he's conditioned over the summer. So he's at a great spot at that price. Uh, next game on the slate, you got Atlanta and Miami. 198 over under. Um, Miami's coming off a of back-to-back. They just lost to San Antonio last night, I think. Uh, on Atlanta's side, I like Paul Millsap. 7,700. Uh, there's no power forwards on Miami's team that can guard Paul Millsap. Uh, Millsap, like I've said, he's a top 10 player in this league. And at the 7,700 price tag, uh, he let me down that other game. But I feel like this is a nice bounce back game, especially against Miami, uh, going up against the likes of Luke Babbitt, Derek Williams, and James Johnson, horrible defenders. Um, 7,700, great price. Go ahead, put him in at least half your lineups tonight. I feel like he's going to go off. Tim Hardaway Jr., 3,600. If, if this turns into a blowout uh, against Miami, Tim Hardaway is going to get a lot of minutes and he's going to be able to produce in those minutes. Uh, he's a streaky score, streaky scorer, sorry. Uh, he's like that Dion Waiters type, but at 3600 I love that price. And yeah, so on the flip side, Dion Waiters, 4200 Now, he had that 40 fantasy point outburst last night. I don't know how well he'll do tonight, uh, especially going up against the likes of Kyle Korver, um, Tim Hardwood Jr. But, you know, both of these guys are streaky as they come. But if Dion Waiters is starting, at that 4200 price tag, it appeals me a lot, uh, especially on that back-to-back. I feel like Deion Waiters is going to get those minutes, and he's going to give you that production. He's safe for at least 25 fantasy points tonight. That's my prediction. But with the upside, as we've seen, of 42, what he had last night. Uh, Hassan Whiteside, 8,300. Dwight Howard is 30 years old. He's not one of the best defenders in the league, but he's still playing solid defense. Uh, with that being said, Whiteside will still uh, take care of him. He's very, very good on the offense and defense. So I don't feel like there's a great spot for Dwight Howard. But for Hassan Whiteside, uh, with Tyler Johnson and Josh Richardson feeling, feeding him the ball, uh, this is a great spot at 8300 price tag. Tyler Johnson uh, as well, 5400 He's starting over uh, Goran Dragic, who probably won't play in this game. But if we get uh, any update later to uh, lineup lock, I'll let you guys know uh, in the description in the comments below. Uh, 5400 is a great price. Dennis Schroeder, uh, I like targeting guys against Dennis Schroeder. He's not one of the best defenders in the league. Even though he's a defensive-minded point guard, he's just not good, in my opinion. So, with that being said, Tyler Johnson is a great play at 5,400. Uh, third game on the slate, you got Charlotte and Minnesota. 206 over under. On the Charlotte side, I like Kemba Walker, 7,900. Going up against Ricky Rubio, Chris Dunn, uh, the rookie. He's not going to be able to stop Kemba Walker. I like targeting uh, point guards against Minnesota. Even though they're on the road, uh, the offense needs to come from somewhere, either from Walker, Batum, or MKG. What, uh, one of these guys is going to need to step up and produce. Uh, I feel like it's going to be close. You can see that 206 over under. Uh, 7,900 is a great price for Kemba Walker. I like him. He should be an all-star this year. Uh, he has my vote. He's been playing like an all-star, and he's been leading Charlotte to a winning record. And they have the best start in their franchise in history. Uh, Nick Batum, 6,800. I like him going up against uh, Zach Levine is out. What did I see? Zach Levine, Shabazz Muhammad should be out, and Brandon Rush should be out. All those shooting guards are uh, injured right now. Uh, with that being said, if none of those guys play, Wiggins is going to slide over to the shooting guard spot, uh, and it's going to let some of the small forwards uh, play up. But Wiggins... Uh, Wiggins and Batum have the potential to cancel each other out. But Batum, uh, let's say they put a D-League prospect or let's say they bring up a shooting guard that hasn't really played in the rotation. Uh, let's say they put Tyus Jones in that shooting guard spot. Uh, Batum's going to smoke him at 6,800. He's a great price. And he's a lock for at least 30 fantasy points a game uh, on average. Uh, on the flip side, you got Andrew Wiggins, 7,000. He's been the leading scorer on the Timberwolves. Uh, as you've seen, he dropped that 47 actual point game uh, the other night against the Los Angeles Lakers. They blew them out at home. I don't know how well they do against the Charlotte Hornets, who are a defensive uh, first team. But as I said, Kemba Walker's their offense. MKG's their defense. If MKG's on Wiggins, I don't really like him. MKG's an elite defender in this league. Uh, I wouldn't suggest Andrew Wiggins if that was the case. Gorgie Jang, 5,600 going up against Marvin Williams, uh, Cody Zeller. 
he doesn't scare me a bit. 5,600, I feel like he's going to have that 40 fantasy point night. So go ahead and put him in most of your lineups tonight. Really, really like him at this spot. Carl Anthony Towns as well. 8,200 going up against Cody Zeller, Roy Hibbert, uh, Frank Kaminsky. None of those guys scare me. At 8,200, uh, they're not going to be able to contain Carl Anthony Towns, especially if Wiggins is paired up with MKG. Uh, that's going to open up more offense uh, passing wise to Carl Anthony Towns to score and get those uh, extra peripherals. Uh, fourth game on the slate, you got Chicago and Portland, 211.5 over under. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a very, very high scoring game. And with that being said, uh, there's only one guy I like on the Chicago Bulls team, and that's Jimmy Butler at the 8,000 price tag. Uh, at 8,000, he's going to give you that uh, scoring ability with that lockdown defense, and he should be on Damian Lillard tonight. As you can see, I'm not recommending him. Uh, Butler has to lock down at least one of the main scorers on that team. And I feel like they're going to pair Butler on Damian Lillard to try to slow him down a little bit. And with that being said, uh, if McCollum's on D. Wade, Wade's not a great defender. So I like McCollum at 7,500. Uh, he should play at least 30 to 35 minutes in this game, if not more. Uh, this could go into overtime. It's be one of those overtime games. Uh, if you want to take a shot at Robin Lopez, uh, by all means, go ahead. I saw what he did to the Miami Heat that other game uh, when they were on the road against Miami. Uh, it was that Dwayne Wade reunion game, but I don't know how he'll be against Mason Plumlee. Mason's an okay defender, and he's that all-around center. That's why I like him, and that's, I'm suggesting him uh, against Robin Lopez. At 5,300, he's going to get you those assists. Uh, he mostly does assists. He, put those, those, he does those putbacks and a few other stuff like that. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers that game. All right, last game on the slate, my favorite game on the slate, Brooklyn and Los Angeles Lakers, 220 over under. This is very, very high. This is going to be a high-scoring game. Now, Brooklyn's coming on a back-to-back, and I don't know if they'll be 100%. They got smacked by the uh, Los Angeles Clippers last night, but it's a great spot for them going up against uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, who are not known for their defense, uh, but they've improved considerably uh, from last year. With that being said, uh, if you guys are like on the Los Angeles Lakers side, D'Angelo Russell, 6,200. Uh, Brooklyn does not have a point guard right now. Uh, Yogi Ferrell uh, has been doing, he did okay last night, uh, but that was in garbage time against the Los Angeles Clippers. Now they're going up against the national NBA team with the starting five, and with that over under, it should be relatively close. Uh, the, the offense is going to need to come from somewhere. Uh, with that being said, D'Angelo Russell should shut him down. Uh, yeah, at 6,200, he's his price point is very appealing to me, and I like him in most uh, formats for tonight. Um, the flip side, you got Julius Randle, 6,600, going up against Trevor Booker, who's not known for his defense. Trevor Booker just does those uh, rebounds, and he has those hustle stats. So if you're counting that, uh, which is not fancy uh, actual points, uh, Randle should uh, be the best to him tonight. And I feel like the Lakers will cruise to this win. It might be close. It might go into overtime. But eventually, the Los Angeles Lakers should win this game pretty easily. Lou Williams and Jordan Clarkson are the other guys I like at 5,600 and 5,100 apiece. Uh, both are very appealing to me. If it was in that blowout situation, regardless um, regardless of who starts between the two or Nick Young, uh, any of those Los Angeles shooting guards should uh, get you at least 20 to 30 fantasy points tonight. If I had to say the better one, uh, it would probably be Lou Williams because it was three-point scoring. But Jordan Clarkson off the bench, uh, I really like that uh, view. And I feel like using Nick Young as the starter, uh, give him some confidence because he never really played last year because of Byron Scott, one of the worst coaches in the league last year, uh, brought his team to 17 wins and didn't even choose to play Nick Young. I don't know why, but that was just how he felt. Um, on the flip side, Brooklyn side, if Brook Lopez plays, I put a question mark there. Uh, he's a great play, great play and a great price at 6100 He's probably one of the better centers on the board uh, because he has that 50 fantasy point upside, especially if the Los Angeles Lakers try to go big. And if they put uh, Timothy Mozgov at that center position uh, to go up against Brook Lopez, Lopez should get the best of him. Mozgov is not known for his defense. Uh, both of them are creeping up to 30 years old. Mozgov is already 30. Lopez, I feel like he's, I think he's like 28, 29 or something like that. Uh, Lopez, I, as I've said, one of the slowest uh, big men in the entire league. But at 6,100, he gives you that offensive versatility, and he gets a lot of those rebounds and the points in the paint. Rondell Hollis-Jefferson is the other guy I like on Brooklyn's side at 4,400. Uh, 
didn't do that well last night. I was very high on him from that other game in Phoenix. But I like targeting small forwards against the Los Angeles Lakers. If you saw that Suns-Los uh, Angeles Lakers game a few weeks ago, I watched T.J. Warren just go to town on the Los Angeles Lakers defense. They were bad against the Wings. Uh, for that reason, Rondé House Jefferson should be in for a semi-decent night. I feel like he'll get at least 30 fantasy points tonight. That's my prediction. But that covers up everything for tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and stay tuned for more. And the lineup will be down below in the description. So go check that out and try to win some money.